Serge, could I ask you, as a man of markets, financial markets, and now uh, a man of DFI, a development financial institution, uh, how you see uh, the recovery? And you have been very successful in raising funds in the first quarter of this year. Uh, you have been oversubscribed in a major euro bond uh, issuing with environmental and social goals at record low cost for uh, an African uh, issuer. So you are in, in the center of what is happening in terms of the financing, and it was evoked by Bertrand Badré this morning, the first session, uh, with some elements of uh, uh, doubts about financing development. Do you share this view? Or are you a bit more uh, uh, optimistic? What do you see in terms of recovery of development? Well, <coughs> thank you very much, uh, Lionel. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Prime Minister. Um, for answer to your very question, I would like to, uh, to thank the uh, organization of the uh, WPC to have uh, made this conference possible in the context we all know uh, and in such a, such a gorgeous place, I have to say. I would also like to thank in person Thierry de Montbrial and I remember the days where you know, I've invited him, I used to invite him for uh, running global markets for a French institution and I have invited him to, uh, to perform in, uh, in front of the CFOs of our group and Thierry de Montbrial has been so exceptional and I believe that <coughs> if I'm sitting here today in my new capacity of chairman, CEO and chairman of the uh, West African Development Bank, it's maybe a little bit uh, because of him because I've that have been credited a little bit of his performance and of his success, as we say in French, on the prêt de So I believe that, you know, I've benefited a little bit of his, of his uh, extraordinary capacity to perform. So thank you, Thierry Montréal. Thank you for this. Now, uh, Mr. Prime Minister, to come back to your very questions, there are three key elements I'd like to share here with you today. And... Um, I would like to stress out today, the first one is this debate, inflation versus deflation or stockflation. The second one is in the current context, post-pandemic, what is the, how is this question, how do we deal with this question of the pay down of public debt? Uh, and the third element, to come back to your very question, the last very point you have, um, you have highlighted, uh, the role of development bank and um, uh, which might appear a little counterintuitive, I would say, the, the strong belief we have, and that would not come to you as a surprise, the, the, the real belief we have in the market, in global market, which is this, uh, this uh, confrontation between an offer and a demand. So the first thing is the risk of inflation or stockflation, notably in the case of the occurrence of deglobalization or, or I would say partial deglobalization midterms. I would say that there are two pitfalls we would need to avoid or we should try as much as possible to avoid. And the first one being, you know, the self-sustained deflation, the risk of, you know, the self-fulfilling predicts. Um, the anticipation of lower prices will lead to uh, a, a less dynamic demand, a slower demand, lower investment, and that would naturally, at the end of the day, lead to lower prices. Not to forget, not to forget that prices, that lower prices of assets leads to higher real interest rates, which is naturally something we definitely need to avoid, I would say, from uh, uh, um, sovereign and public 
sovereign public issuers. The second thing is the sharp increase of prices at the opposite. That could lead to situations we currently face, I would say, in countries like South Africa, Lebanon, Argentina, Venezuela, and I even saw on TV yesterday, or the day before, uh, yesterday I think, the intervention of the Prime Minister of France, who was, um, who was trying, to, um, trying to convince uh, the, the French population that you know, uh, there wouldn't be any surge in the, in, the, uh, in the gas, in the gas prices. So, because from a social standpoint, these are, uh, uh, these are things one uh, should, as much as possible, try to avoid. If I had a magical stick, I would tell you that the good compromise here is naturally a little bit of inflation. The world can afford it. We currently stand at less than 3%. The world can afford a little bit of inflation. That would, be, that would lead to less, pain, uh, uh, less painful, or let me rephrase it, that would lead to painless uh, debt repayment. And we believe that the current tensions are, uh, we, we have um, on prices. Uh, the current tensions we currently face are non-recurrent. We believe that they are transitional. Um, and it's, it marks the inadequation between supply and demand. The supply chain is, as we speak, the supply chain is destabilized, and we believe that the situation is temporary. The surge, the surge of economic growth we face is fueled by a strong demand, and the subsequent inflation is also led by this demand. The second element I would like to, to, to point out emphasize here today in front of you is how to, in this context, how to pay down public debt without slowing down economic growth and provoke a crisis of confidence. The, the debt write-off can be a very seductive debate, and we have had this debate recently can be very seductive. We don't believe that it is the ultimate situation, the ultimate solution. We believe that we should explore a little bit more the, the uh, and that's the trend actually, the, the, um, from the international community. First, there are a number of solutions starting by alleviating the debt service. The second solution, and we could elaborate on, 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 on all this, but the second one should be to provide concessional funding long term with lower sensitivity to government budgets. These are solutions, and the funds are there, and we'll come back to this later on. The third one, as an illustration, and um, Mr. Prime Minister, you have mentioned it, you have rightly mentioned this question of the SDR. There's a natural definition of the SDR, which is, I would say, and I'm speaking in front of former governor of the Banque de France and president of the ECB, with a lot of respect, but there's this, there's this definition, classical definition of the SDR, the, as a monetary solution. But there is also, and this is what we've been pushing for, um, a financial definition of the SDR, which means how do we support, how do we support the, um, mostly the emerging countries, how do we support them? Post-pandemic, the real rule when it comes to solving this kind of issue is to consider that at any point in time, cash is king. Liquidity is king. And cash being king, we believe that what's been put in place recently, value 23rd of August by the IMF, 
it is a very good solution. It is a very good solution. And we believe that um, that would give means and uh, means to uh, emerging countries um, to face um, non-governmental, non-budget issues, non-budget uh, uh, funding, but immediately to inject within the system this liquidity as Dior has been converted. From public sovereign issues, there are a number of solutions. I've partially mentioned it. Inflation can help alleviate debt smoothly, partially. And again, the world can afford that. The world can afford a little bit of inflation in a context of high economic growth. One other solution from the uh, public sovereign issues could be the setting up of budget consolidation policies in the context of the risk of pot or social, potential social tensions. Again, South Africa has, from that perspective, uh, um, can, can, from that perspective, be an illustration. One other solution is debt reprofiling to benefit from the current low, very low interest rates environment. As we know that interest, interest, uh, interest rates uh, are negative today. It is a huge, unique opportunity. Last thing I would like to highlight here is debt restructuring. Debt restructuring so as to restore the sustainability of public debt and avoid uh, repayment default. One key element again here is at any point in time, and this is my regular speech to, uh, to different governments and the ministers of finance are regularly made, is to avoid repayment default. Let's discuss reprofiling. Let's discuss, let's discuss uh, uh, restructuring. At any point in time, we should avoid um, repayment default. Mr. Prime Minister, your very last question. Yes, yes, we, we believe indeed in the market on the basis that, and this was my first observation when I moved from pure private capital market sector to, um, to public, to, I mean, to deal with public issues now. Um, the development banks, and notably in Africa, are way, 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 read my lips, they are way, way, way undercapitalized. Undercapitalized. So that's why, and that's why you have mentioned, we are currently roadshowing in order to double our chair one capital, in order to raise debt in the market. And we strongly believe that there are huge opportunities in the market. The market has strong pockets, strong liquidity pocket, pocket for a number of reasons. Uh, aging of population, over, uh, over, over savings in a uh, uh, number of uh, uh, places in the world, notably in Asia, Japan, etc., etc. Now, uh, in a region where the economic growth is still very vivid, and I do agree with ma'am, uh, Minister, um, in 2020, in our region, the economic growth was, in spite of the pandemic, was positive, 0.9, which was one of the rare, 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 few rare uh, 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 regions in the world. Because of a number of reasons, uh, um, the median year, the median age, sorry, in the region is 20 years old, 20 years old which is huge opportunity to sustain this growth and also a stretch. If we don't have, and if the governments in general do not, don't know how to deal with this. And our job as development bank is precisely to capture this energy and to wrap it so as to offer it to investors in the market. Basically, there are five criteria we're working on. There are five criteria the market is expecting from us. The first one is yield. What is the return on assets? First thing. 
The second thing is the rating. Bewa Day is one of the best rated um, organization in the, in the uh, region or in Africa. With the, uh, uh, we are BAA1, um, so investment grade, made of investment grade, eligible to, uh, uh, um, to a number of investors. Governance. Investors are looking more than ever to understand what's the organization, what are the process, et cetera, et cetera. That's why we have launched, uh, as you have rightly mentioned, the sustainability bond that's been a very high success earlier this year. Everything was on the table. The traceability of the funds is something that we've been putting on the table. Impact. What is the impact of the, of the funding? What is the impact of the, of the means we are uh, <coughs> currently uh, um, uh, um, getting into the uh, market? Traceability, I've mentioned it. And the very last thing, it's a little bit technical, it's everything related to format. A number of investors are willing to invest in, in an SPV. We have to provide the SPV. Others would be willing to either go through a loan or a bond, a structured deposit, a swap, whatsoever. So this is about flexibility, this capacity to adapt ourselves to the market. But the pockets, the investment pockets, are very deep. That will be all for me, Mr. Prime Minister. Thank you. Thank you very much, Serge. It was very comprehensive and, in a sense, uh, very optimistic because you, you have a, 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 till could, <coughs> sorry, a, a toolkit for uh, managing the increase in debt, which, which is quite, uh, quite impressive. Uh, you, you, you are a, 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 a bit, how to say that, uh, willing to see a bit of more inflation with, without fear, uh, some, sometimes to be dangerous to enter yeah. in that sort of uh, situation. Uh, we can afford, you said it's affordable. It's affordable, with uh, a magic stick. Yeah, and, and, for, and, and for maybe a, a, short, a short while. But <coughs> it was very imp important that you, 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 you uh, emphasized the fact that our value chains are totally disturbed. For the, for the time being, and uh, the jury is a bit out to see if this inflation is there to last or is, is essentially a sort of accidental effect of supply chains uh, disturbed by the strength of the recession and the strength of the recovery uh, as, as a contrast. So thank you very much for all of those uh, uh, elements. Uh,